get our Virtual Pilots Requiem. In today's debrief we'll be flying the BF-109 F4 and my wingman today is going to be Stunner. Uh, this is the first time Stunner and I have flown together and it turned out to be an interesting sortie so we hope you enjoy it. So to start off with, uh, catch a bogey at right 2 o'clock just under the horizon. We zoom in there, we can see it. Now I'm beginning a right hand turn here to try and create some uh, intercept geometry so we can cut it off and get a better visual identification on it. Um, now our stun ends up sliding out to my left 8 o'clock so I need to verify his position to make sure I know where he is mentally. And uh, then I tell him I'm going to be padlocked in this target. Which means that I'm going to be focusing on this one exclusively and not looking around so um, it'll be up to stun to clear the airspace around us. Um, and because of this we end up having a MiG come in unobserved. So looking at the TAC view, uh, the aircraft that I spotted is actually a friendly 109 but I didn't know that at the time. And because I do this right hand turn very quickly, um, this ends up having the effect of pushing stunner out to my left 8 o'clock. So my turn here has um, kind of compromised the formation a little bit. And because I have to continue this right hand turn, this has the effect of pushing stunner further back towards my 6 o'clock. And since I'm padlocked on the bogey in front of me, I'm not looking at anything else, and Stunner is trying to focus on maintaining a position with me, this MiG ends up getting a completely unobserved entry, and he's sitting right in between the two of us. So while this isn't a great situation, it doesn't appear that the MiG actually knows that Stunner is there either. So I'm continuing to just fly along fat, dumb and happy, trying to identify this bogey, while uh, Stunner and I are completely oblivious to the MiG right behind us. Now as we're getting a little bit closer, I'm trying to get an idea of what this is, but um, my identification skills on this sortie were kind of letting me down a little bit, and I just couldn't figure out what it was. So I try to have a quick check of where Stunner is, um, see if anyone else is around me. Right about here, I recognise that it's a 109, so I'm like, alright, I don't need to worry about this one anymore, so I pull off in the direction where Stunner is, and I see two airplanes. I'm thinking, alright, what the hell is going on? So looking behind, I see that stunner and his 109, and zooming in on the closer one, it looks like a Russian airplane with a red nose, which is bad news. So as I begin this left-hand turn, trying to identify stunner versus this bogey, stunner puts himself into lag um, in an effort to try and see this airplane as well, uh, but this has an effect of increasing the distance between him and me, so he's not really in a supporting position and if I was to continue this left hand turn the MiG is going to be able to cut me off very quickly and shoot at me before Stunner can get in and help. So I actually need to reverse back towards Stunner to help make him a factor again in this fight. So instead of continuing this left hand turn I'm going to reverse slowly and then bring myself back towards Stunner not too quickly because if I pull too quick then that will allow the MiG to use lead pursuit and cut me off. So I need to turn towards Stunner in order to bring him towards me while also keeping the bandit close enough to me to stay interested and try and be focused on me while Stunner moves in behind him. So here we see uh, Stunner goes into lag. I'm going to reverse back towards him. But you don't want to make this turn too tight remember because you don't want that MiG to close the distance. But I turn enough to keep him interested while simultaneously allowing Stunner to close that distance quickly and roll in behind the MiG unobserved. And this way I've brought Stunner back into the fight much faster than I would have if I continued that left hand turn earlier. Now this has just turned into a drag and bag scenario where I'm essentially playing as bait to allow Stunner to close in for a shot. It's getting a little bit too close so I'm going to bunt negative G here. So I start my rolling pull and cut the power. I'm trying to reduce my forward speed and spit the MiG out in front. It looks like he's struggling to keep up in this roll, so I'm pretty confident he's going to end up there. And as he comes out in front, I'll increase the power again, and I've at least neutralized his previous offensive position against me. Now I'm going to show a replay on this, just look at the visual cue on the MiG during the maneuver. Here we see, as the MiG is in the maneuver, he starts looking very unstable, and this tells us that he's nearing the performance limit of what he can do. So it's more than likely he's going to have to back off, or else he'll end up stalling out. In either case, he's not going to be offensive anymore, and he's going to have to recover control of the airplane. And this forces him out in front of us. Now the MiG is going to be much faster than me, uh, just simply because I gave up some airspeed in order to force him to overshoot. However, Stun is still nearby, and uh, he does end up scoring a hit on the uh, MiG here. And I'm just trying to act as a supporting position, so I'll take a quick snapshot. 
uh, would end up missing it. So here you can see, just doing that drag and bag, uh, keeping the MIG close enough to be interested while allowing Stunner to close in for a shot. But eventually the MIG is getting too close for comfort, so I'm going to bunt over, do some negative G, and then bring it into a roll and cut the power. Stunner's still able to get some hits during the roll, which is very good. Here we see the MIG starting to lose control a little bit, shooting at me, but he's unable to keep up on this rolling maneuver, so he ends up having to give up on it and get spat out in front. Now Stunner must have kept his power up in this manoeuvre because you can see he's had to take a very wide turn in lag here in order to maintain our uh, position behind the bandit before he comes in for another shot. He scores the hit and then I come in with my uh, missing shots here. So from here I'm happy to let uh, Stunner take the lead in the attack. Um, so I'm going to let him make the attacks here and I'm going to try and um, give a supporting position so I'm going to try and clear the airspace of uh, bandits around us um, and identify anyone who's nearby. So I see one known airplane there, which I call out the stunner as inbound, so he pulls off his target. This way we're not distracted by this guy underneath us while uh, the unknown bogey comes in. And uh, judging by the pursuit curve on this guy, it looks like he's friendly as he's going to be going for that MiG. And uh, even though we had the fight under control, he's coming in, so it's not really worth it for both of us to start. Uh, joining in, it's going to be easier for the two of us to stay up above and um, just watch this guy do his thing and if he needs any help then we're in a position to be there at least. Um, otherwise if all three of us are getting up on this one target it's a waste of time as you end up having the possibility of uh, more bandits coming in unobserved and ruining your day. So here we see as that 109 is engaging there. Um, I'm trying to stay a little bit closer and I've been focusing on them a little bit too long, so kind of just as I'm circling over the top here, I need to figure out where Stunner is again. So we just kind of level off the turn here and try and locate Stunner. Um, I suppose looking around a little bit, but um, as a supporting role right now, I'm not doing a very good job at it. Uh, so I'm more or less focusing on these two guys, looking for a way to come in for a shot. But instead, I should be really looking around me more often to find if anyone else is entering the fight, as well as maintaining visual with Stunner. Here might be a position for a shot. So I can start coming down and I can see that uh, the MiG's already been damaged enough to be destroyed so I just pull off it and uh, that's the end of that particular engagement. Alright so moving on, uh, here's the next portion of the sortie. Uh, there's a couple of airplanes out here in a furball and um, I see one plane chasing another and we can't really figure out who's who. So for my intercept here, I kind of hedge my bets and point my nose in between the two of them. This way I have the option of either switching to the lead or the rear depending on which one is the enemy. So identifying the front guy as a 109, I'm going to perform a lead turn on the rear bandit. So I begin my roll and pull nice and early while trying to maintain sight in the bandit, increasing the G as we come around the back. This way I can arrive in the bandit's control zone with closure under control and inside a gun's range. So just looking at that again, um, after identifying the 109, it was a split second decision to begin the lead turn on this bandit. So as we begin that roll and start the pull, we need to keep sight. So I shift in the seat to maintain sight, and I know I'm going to come out the back, so I need to start increasing the G. This way my airspeed is going to decrease, that's going to control the closure between me and the bandit. And I come out the back a little bit, but he doesn't really move, so this allows me to still slide in behind him and be within gun's range and take some shots. Now going over to the tack view, a lead turn to something that I don't see people do too often. Quite often from this position people want to take the shot from here instead of mm -hmm. doing a lead turn and getting a better shot later. Now as I came around, if the bandit was to reverse left into me at this point, I would just continue my turn and if the bandit continues going left then Stunner will be in a position to attack. But the bandit didn't see me so he didn't even move which allowed me to be in position to kill him. So from this third part of the sortie, um, Stunner's out of my left 11 o'clock or so, so I'm not in the best position here, but um, I am able to at least clear 6 o'clock. Uh, Bennett did turn past us earlier, which we're trying to find, and um, here we end up spotting it just off to our left 9 o'clock or so. Feels like it ready to form back on the Stunner. Um, roll back to the right and have a look and end up spotting a little engagement over here, 
And it looks like uh, Yak is offensive against 109, so uh, we make the turn towards it. Now from that 109's perspective, he's got his nose up really high, um, bleeding off all of his airspeed, trying to get a shot here, and uh, puts himself in a pretty precarious position because he ends up stalling out, and uh, the Yak above has a nice energy advantage, so it can be kind of hard for him to escape if he's not careful. So the 109 is probably going to end up uh, fairly defensive pretty quickly. So I'm just trying to make my way over there and get there before any damage is done. Now as we turn around towards this uh, Yak chasing the 109, watch the path they're tracing in the sky. As the Yak is giving chase, you can kind of visualize the circle they're flying. I'm trying to fly towards the middle of that circle. Um, but then the 109 reverses and this allows us to slot in behind the Yak here and we can take some shots and score a hit and as we're following him downhill we fire some more and then finish him off. So looking at the replay, we're focusing on the second round of shooting. In the second round of shooting, my traces fall short, so I need to visualise by how much I'm missing by and then increase the lead by that much in order to score hits on the next attempt, which we end up doing by taking his wing off. So here we see as I'm coming around on my left hand turn, the Yak is chasing this 109 and they're in a nice left hand circle. So at this point I'm driving my airplane towards the center of this imaginary turn circle, so if they were to continue that, I can fall into the control zone of the um, Yak, nice and close. But what ends up happening is the 109 continues rolling and goes downhill, which makes the geometry problem a little bit easier for me because the Yak is just giving me angles here and I don't need to change my flight path very much other than falling in behind him. This allows me to take the shots on the way down and then end up getting the kill. So after the attack, I uh, continued up in the climb and uh, Stano is up above me watching and he's off to my left 9 o'clock. So as I utilize the airspeed in that dive to climb back up and unload over the top here and then we'll finish off in an approximate combat spread and this is about the time for me to uh, start heading home as I had to get off. So Stunner came back to the airfield with me to sign off and uh, I'm going to do an initial on pitch here coming into land. So I'm at idle power going nice and fast. I'm going to make a right hand break so I want to make sure no one's on the right hand side. So with idle power roll it in and start pulling a high G turn leading off all the extra airspeed. And then once I get below 300 km per hour, start extending the gear. And then below like 250, I'll begin extending the flaps all the way out. And then we just keep idle power as long as we can and uh, make our way towards the touchdown area. So I do happen to see one airplane coming in the land, so can't quite do a fully idle approach here. And there is one airplane getting ready to take off as well. And uh, I need to hurry up and land to get off, so I'm just going to make it happen. So we're coming around, um, make sure that airplane is going to be out in front of us. I know Stunner's behind me as well, configuring in the same way as I'm calling it out. Um, this airplane's taking the left-hand side of the runway, and we can see uh, the Heinkel there is on the right-hand side, so we're going to land on the left-hand side as well. Increase the power a little bit, now that we've got the separation we need. As we come over the threshold, we can bring it back to idle, and hold it off. We touch down and three point attitude, staying on the left hand side of the runway with full back pressure and brakes coming to a stop. So, I hope you enjoyed today's debrief. Um, I'm far from a 109 expert as I really don't get to fly very often. Um, but, either way, I hope you're able to learn something from this sortie and that you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to share it with your friends and become a subscriber. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.